Hey guys, this one's about the she task. Um, the she task is your excuse to talk about something specifically sciencey, so uh, whether it's physics, biology, or chemistry, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's an excuse for you to, to explain something in kind of fair bit of detail, almost like a research project, but not quite, but focusing on the science of human endeavor, endeavor elements um, throughout it. So there's uh, four big key ideas in science of human endeavor. We have communication and collaboration, we have development, influence, and application limitation. And for these um, four things, there are 30 sentences. Um, hopefully in your Teams or on Daymap or via email, your teachers, me included, would have emailed you um, a Word document. Uh, that Word document was made by someone, a uh, mate of mine who works um, uh, at a school in Adelaide, does a lot of stuff for SafeWard, and he sort of pared back the the wishy-washy stuff that was put out there a few years ago and put it into 30 sentences. And these sentences break down um, these words here. So in the past we've had students do, you know, something that's um, sciencey based, like an issues investigation, that's okay, but they would throw the word development or throw the word um, collaboration or throw the word limitations in there somewhere without actually saying what those things are. Alright, so the uh, good ones, so the good um, she tasks that I've read and that I've moderated and that I've um, given feedback on as part of those processes are contemporary. So contemporary means something that's kind of recent. Um, so your contemporaries are people around about the same age as you, so a few years either side. So contemporary, what I want you to think is something that's happened probably in the last decade, if not certainly something uh, since you were born, something sciencey since you were born. So probably start with 2010 plus. So anything in the last decade or so, start there. There's lots of stuff out there. Um, they are uh, not just contemporary, they are also, um, uh, how can I put it, they're even in terms of the spread between these two ideas. So you have to talk about the she stuff, you have to talk about the science stuff. Um, and it needs to be sort of a reasonably fair balance. So I'm going to call it balanced. So if you're looking at something that's around about uh, 1500 words, you're going to have like an introduction. So 150 for the intro, 150 for the outro. Now we're left with about 1200. So if we halve that, we're looking at about 600 words each or a couple of paragraphs per thing where you're talking about the sciencey stuff, sciencey stuff, or the communication, collaboration, development, influence, application, limitation stuff. All right. Um, they use evidence to support what they're talking about. The good ones do. So it's not just enough to talk about some high-end science and some stuff that's linked to your curriculum statement somewhere in your subject outline. Um, it's not enough to talk about that in a really fancy way if you can't talk about the the human element of it. So the science is a human endeavor. Um, so there's evidence into it. It's also linked to your subject outline. If you don't know what that is, you bloody well should, go and find it. Um, your subject outline has uh, two columns. Anything in the left hand side column, uh, any of those dot points can be an exam question. They can also give you the basis for one of these good um, contemporary balanced uh, evidence-based um, uh, science to human endeavor investigations. All right, the bad ones uh, may read more like a history report. History is great, um, but in this context, what we're looking to do is push the boundaries of science. The whole point of this task is to get you to look at the, you know, why the hell should people do science in the first place? And if we're looking back uh, too far into the past, then we start to lose that cutting edge focus of, of what's going on. Um, look at something that's happening in the world in the last decade. I mean, you could go for um, even in the last six months, so at the start of 2020, we had a whole bunch of bushfires that have been exacerbated by the compounding effects of global warming due to excess greenhouse gas emissions over the last forever, all right? So if you were looking at a contemporary issue that was chemistry based, you could look at um, greenhouse gas emissions in that context. If you were looking at something um, in the last six months uh, in terms of biology, you could actually look at the spread of a pandemic. Um, I'm recording this 
uh, on what is it, April the 8th. It's the final, so final week of, of term one when you guys are all on student free days. This is the Wednesday. Um, you, you're not here because of coronavirus. It's a global pandemic. Um, so the science behind it would be how global pandemics spread, their growth rates, um, how you can slow the spread, how you can treat them, um, the process of bringing a vaccine to market. You can talk about the psychology of the anti-vaxxer movement. You can do lots and lots and lots of stuff. Um, in terms of physics, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope is just about to be launched. Uh, NASA took a photo of a black hole just last year. Uh, they redefined, literally redefined what a kilogram means. Um, these things have happened in the last uh, 18 months. All of these things. You have access to a lot of cutting edge science. Um, this is a chance for you to link that cutting edge science into your subject outline. And what that does is um, ticks off uh, KA1 where you're actually looking at um, exploring a whole bunch of different sciencey things uh, in a slightly different way than a test. All right. The other bad ones come across as some sort of issues investigation whereby you're talking about what's good about coronavirus, what's bad about, hopefully there's nothing good about it, um, uh, what's good about the issue, what's bad about the issue, and then giving your opinion at the end. You can still do that with a uh, sheet task, but you need to have this stuff in there, the elements of um, the Sites of Human Endeavour, CC Dial. Uh, K A. I'm going to go three, I think it is, it's either two or three, um, is the one that talks about uh, the science of human endeavour, linking science to society. And what the, I don't know, the, the adjectives, I guess, start off with, um, so there's logical is a B standard, um, thorough, detailed, comprehensive, all of those things are what we're looking for when we're looking at that, you know, that A standard. And there's a really... Um, really neat pattern that I've spotted over the years about the students who manage to reach that A standard and the students who don't manage to reach that A standard. Um, and what I want to do in this video is go through those things so you can reach that standard. All right, I'm not going to talk about how to unpack the science um, involved. That's your, that's your teacher's job. Um, that's my job if I'm your teacher. What I want you to do is look at uh, CC Dial. So let's have picked an idea and it is, uh, uh, I'm not actually going to do an actual idea, unless I've picked an idea and I want to talk about the science of it. Now, what I'm going to do is go away and do some research. Um, so we're finding an idea or a topic by doing some, you know, uh, iflscience.com, um, sciencealert.com, if you look at scientific journals, scientific articles on, on the internet, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. And there'll be drop down headings for biology, for chemistry, for physics, for earth and space, for astronomy, a whole range of different sciences, geology, heaps of stuff. All right, um, psychology as well in a lot of cases. So what we're looking for is you to basically go off and find something you want to talk about. Think of it sort of like you did when you were coming up with an idea for the research project. Then you're going to take that idea and you're going to link it to the subject outline. Because if it doesn't fit in the subject outline, we can't assess it against the subject outline. If you can't find it in the subject outline, we can't assess KA1. So we can't assess whether you've actually shown knowledge or... Sorry, we can. We can see that you've shown um, uh, some knowledge and some understanding and applied that to what you've written. However, it doesn't match anything in the subject outline. So unfortunately, that, all that hard work wouldn't count. So, find an idea, link it to the subject outline. The next thing you're going to do is going to keep reading. And when you keep reading, what you're going to do is you're going to find, about, find out about the development of some brand new technology that's been um, uh, implemented to enable that thing to happen. So, coronavirus, uh, brand new um, technologies, or using uh, old... Um, 
medications in new ways, all right? Uh, it could be about all of the scientists who had to collaborate, work together. So scientists, when they're looking for vaccines, are actually sharing information all across the world because when something is this big, they're not just in it to find some, some way to make billions of dollars. They're actually trying to save lives, preserve life first and foremost. You could look at the influence. Um, Influence isn't necessarily what has the science done in terms of influencing other areas, but also what have those other areas done in terms of influencing that science? So um, when the uh, bushfires happen and when coronavirus is happening and when um, we're sending remote controlled cars to Mars and all these sorts of things, uh, people to the International Space Station will do scientific experiments when these things are happening we're not just using physics or chemistry or biology we're using engineering we're using maths we're using technology we're using um, psychology we're using sociology all of these things in in order to influence the outcomes of physics physics and chemistry and biology and psychology um, the application and limitations so where is this being used um, how is it not just where is it being applied where is it being used but um, who's doing that who paid for that um, was it a private enterprise? Was it a government enterprise? All right, and all of those things will start coming out when you keep reading. Um, once you think you've done enough reading, read some more, and then once you think, no, 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 I've definitely done enough reading. Now what you can do is you can pick one, two, three, four out of sorry, one or two or three or four, and what you're going to do is you're going to pick two of those. So in order to do this um, KA3, to do it in depth and thoroughly and all that sort of stuff, you can't just go, oh, I'm going to focus just on the development of this technology or I'm going to focus on um, where this technology is used and how it's used. You can't do that. You need to show a few more, you know, have a few more strings to your bow, so to speak. So what you're going to do is pick two um, of the key elements. And underneath each of those two, what you're going to do is pick two or three or more of the dot points underneath it. So for communication and collaboration, I think there's five or six dot points underneath that. We've got four key ideas, we've got 30 things, so they're going to have seven or eight on average um, like dot points underneath it. And when you keep reading, you're going to find out which of those dot points actually fits. All right, um, my uh, year 12s and uh, my year 11 physics class have both been given um, some snippets of past students' work, and not so that they can read what someone else wrote, but so that they can look at the she uh, paragraph, the she section, and see whether it has actually been um, logical or where it's, whether it's been uh, thorough or whether it's in-depth or whether it's insightful or something similar, all right? It's, um, it's something kind of new for you guys, but in order to maximize your potential in this, you've got 600 words here to cover two or more key elements, two or three different ways to cover those key elements um, for each of them, all right? So at the end of it, you're gonna have a minimum of four opportunities to talk about the science of human endeavor strains. Um, if you want to throw a few extras in there, excellent. Um, cite evidence to support your understanding and if you want to make it an A+, plus, those kids, they linked the Science of the Human Endeavour stuff specifically to the cutting edge science with links to how that fits in the subject outline. If you think it's challenging, yeah it kind of is, um, but there's been students in the past who have done that. Uh, they've actually linked three of the dot points, so two different key ideas, um, two dot points out of one, one out of another, to the science based on the subject outline. They did that in two sentences. So it's actually not that difficult um, if you keep reading, basically. All right. So the background research is the the big thing here and what that does is it means that you can see where she fits with the science rather than trying to go all right, I'm going to write an issues investigation but I'm going to shoehorn some of the science of human endeavor stuff into it it doesn't work that way so step one find an idea or a topic step two link it to the subject outline step three keep reading step four and five and six are also keep reading step seven 
uh, hit up your teacher, see whether they think it's something viable, and then see how many times you can link it to CC Dial. If you've got the sheet that I'm talking about, highlight on that sheet those 30 sentences, those 30 little key phrases, snippets, highlight on that sheet where they come up when you're doing your reading. And what you'll find is that, you know, it might be developing, you're, you're ticking off all five or six of the little bits underneath that, but influence, you've only hit one. That would kind of suggest that the development aspect might be a really good idea to focus on. All right? So that's what I want you guys to do. Um, and this is stuff that you can do uh, when you're home, when you're um, not at school, when you've got, you know, study lessons or home study or it's a weekend or it's a Friday afternoon or whatever it is. This is stuff that you can keep doing no matter what. It's not content driven. Um, all you need to do is link some of the subject outline to some of the science that you've, you're going to um, research.